Uh, just a little heads up, we will be talking about eating disorders. So if this does trigger you in any way, please feel free to miss this one out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday episode of Two Gals, One Pod. Evie's doing Wambas Bambas just for you. Wambas Bambas is when you shake your titties big or small together. <laughs> She's knocked herself out. Mine hardly move. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, they look quite big. They look at do. that. No, What's no. that? Yeah, it's a whole handful. It's one of yours, isn't it? You're listening to Two Girls, One Pod. I'm recording from Nam uh, Wurundjeri. Land. And I am recording on Wangaburra land. So uh, yeah. there you go. Thank you for joining us. Our Thursday episode, Angie, is a little bit deeper. It's a little bit uh, more divey. Yes. We like it to be yeah. uh, a little bit more heavier, you know, it's almost like a, a heavy whipping cream rather than a like, you know, those ones that you, no one likes to yeah. eat that one. I mean, sometimes you like to no. eat it, but you sometimes just flick it away. You're like, oh, it's good, but it's not that heavy whipping cream, double cream. You want to feel. So this is a full cream episode. That's what we're going to call it. A full cream, creme de la creme episode. And um, what about that? Full fat. Full fat. Oh, it's full fat. Perfect, perfect segue because I came across another article the other day. I love me an article. And it was... Well, the article is this woman was talking about celebs the media used to consider fat when they weren't and how they manipulated an entire generation. And it got us both thinking that when I look back over time and I think of certain people, like, for example, this one was huge. There was a time in Hollywood where Kate Winslet was yeah. classified as a bigger woman, right? And on Titanic, Joan Rivers even said that they could have both fit on that raft, which to me, looking back, when I was, I don't know how old I was when Titanic came out. I was really young, one of my favourite movies of all time. But I remember growing up thinking, yeah, she is a lot, like she's fuller than, fuller faced than the other women I would watch. Um, Maybe because I was watching teen shows. I don't know. She was only a teenager when she did the film though. I think she was only 19, 20. And I look back now and I'm like, that body is tiny. Like, mm-hmm. what? Did they did they Mandela affect us to make us think that women that were a size eight, like bigger than like eight, ten, twelve, mm. were big women, mm. not size sixes, fours, and twos, or whatever they are? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, everyone knows that the camera adds ten pounds, which I don't know about that. I really don't know about that because we've been on television for a long time, and I don't think we look bigger on TV than we are in real life. I've never had someone say I don't know. to me, oh, you're so much thinner in real life than oh, you look I on TV. I get that all the time. I always say, people always say, you're so much smaller than what I thought. Oh, well, so maybe it does. Or thinner. No, they always say shorter and they also say, I didn't realise how small you were. Right. Well, see, I can. I think you can see exactly how small you are on TV. Like you, you did Dancing with the Stars and you did Bachelorette, and you were tiny, and like absolutely tiny on both. Yeah, of them. and the jungle. So, so how small. Small? Do they really? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, I think maybe it's a certain person that looks bigger with that with that celluloid camera. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think I look bigger on camera. I think I look exactly the same than and, and what I do in real life. My mind is so manipulated by the media that I don't even know what I think when I see myself. I probably think gross. Yeah, you probably do because of the media and because of society. But, you know, it's been around for a really long time. In the 80s was when I first started seeing it um, because I was born in the 70s and that was the age of the supermodel. That was the first time that term had Mm. been used when you got these women, women who were healthy looking, like strong. And tanned, like that was your your supermodel. Um, the body, you know, big breasts. The body was, of course, Elle McPherson, um, Cindy Crawford, like big-breasted women with big smiles, big hair. Um, you know, we and we would call in the eighties someone like Marilyn Monroe um, fat. Even though mm. now you look at Marilyn Monroe in the 50s and you're like, there was nothing fat about her at all. Like, at yeah, all. She was that's really healthy so looking. so wild. Like, Kim Kardashian, whose mm. body we celebrate, she had to lose weight to fit into mm. Marilyn Monroe's dress. 
Mm. And yeah. Kim Kardashian is tiny. Like she's got a big tiny. booty, but her yeah, waist but is that's tiny. that's not her booty. Like she's added that to herself. Yeah, she's a little, yeah, little that's crazy. flat bummed woman naturally. Um, the 90s we saw that, as you do, it just changes all the time. And the 90s is really was one of the most dangerous for weight and, you know, mm. eating disorder bringing ons we've ever seen because that's when we had um, modelling known as heroin chic. So mm, the skinnier and sicker you looked, the more popular were, you were and the more work you would get. So that was really hard, um, a really hard time. I was in my 20s in the 90s and I lost weight multiple times to fit into the culture that was the 90s. And that was the 90s were waif, like Winona Ryder, um, Angelina yeah. Jolie, like everyone was – the waifs were in. We actually literally had a band called The Waifs. <laughs> Oh my god. The word the wife was was a really popular word. And yeah, we we used to say that there was women who were fat who weren't. They just simply weren't fat at all like Drew Barrymore, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, sh- she was another one. Drew Barrymore and Charlie's Angels. She was like the chubbier one because Cameron Diaz and Lucy Liu were so tiny. Like Lucy Liu is a tiny little woman and yeah. Cameron Diaz is a tall model. Yeah. And she lost a lot of weight for that movie and Drew was had a normalish body but in real life she probably would have been a lot tinier than we thought she was. Um, I remember that Kate Winslet one because I remember yeah. reading an article about how sh- much weight she lost after she or during when she worked on um, a period piece with Emma Thompson and – Emma Thompson got right in her ear and said to her, you know, you have got to not do this. This this is you, like, basically pandering to the man. Like, they're going to tell you mm. you're fat and you're just going to want to be thin. And she got so thin for that movie but then she never, ever did again. Like, she was a really normal size and she stayed normal size throughout her life. But then life. you say Emma Thompson said that but then Emma Thompson's getting slammed for wearing a fat suit a fat to be. Suit. Yeah. Miss Trunchbull in the remake yeah. of Matilda, which I actually didn't know they were doing. We just watched mm. that and Evie just watched it for the first time. First One time. of the best movies ever. Yes. Um, which is movie. weird because it made me think, why do we have to have evil characters to be fat? Mm, like think of like right. Ursula or like Miss Trunchbull. Ogre. or Shrek. You know, and like Shrek's yeah. a great, great character, but he, he was an ogre and an ogre is a big, yeah. fat, ugly, ugly Swamp beast monkey. Yeah, and if you are the fat person, like Fat Amy in yeah. um, all what what's it called? That Pitch singing Perfects. movie? Pitch Perfect. She has to be fat, but she says she calls herself Fat Amy so you don't have to. But the whole time mm. she's got this over-exaggerated confidence, like, ew, look at this fat girl thinking she's hot. How mm. embarrassing. And we laugh at her thinking her how cringe. hot she is, but she is hot. Yeah, totally It's hot. because she's fat. She cannot be Hot. Yeah, can't be attractive. Can't no, be so she can seriously. say she's pretty. Had to be the funny uh, character. It's and so wild. There's a great article that was written um, from one of my favourite Twitter journalists, um, Beck Shaw, who has the Twitter handle Brockle Snitch. Um, she's very funny. But she wrote a great article about a month ago and it's um, – come to our attention again today about Emma Thompson donning a fat suit to play Mrs Trunchbull for the new Matilda remake of a movie. And, you know, of course it's it's divided everyone again, like, oh, we, actors are just, you know, um, playing characters, like are we going to get away with prosthetic noses, are we going to get away, like give away costumes and all that kind of thing. And the point that she was making in the article, which um, really resonated with me, is that you know, all of her life, every movie she's ever watched, if it's had a fat person in it, they've been the butt of the joke. So you've yeah. got your fat Amys, um, but you just think about any movie that you've really ever watched, if you see a fat person in it, if you don't know that they're fat, um, as she says in her article, they'll put a hot dog in their hand to make sure you know that they're yeah. disgusting. Um, or they'll eat messily. You know, they'll, they'll be in a pie-eating competition or something like that, you know. Um, th- they're always the butt of the joke. They're never the, the lead um, unless, like, Amy Schumer did it and then 
she kind of, oh, I don't know, like there's just, today there's been a few changes, but I really can't tell you that many changes that have been made to make that main character who is the the main love interest of a story also happens to be fat, but it's never touched on. It's always touched on. You know the um, shows Shrill? Have you watched Shrill on Stan? Mm. I think it's on Stan. It's great. She's main character is um, a big girl, but they touch on it. Uh, Somebody Somewhere, absolutely love that show so much. If if you haven't watched it, it's on Binge and Foxtel. It's just brilliant. Um, And Booksmart, like you've got Beanie Feldstein who is – a main actress now who does a lot of um, characters but I think she has been in a few movies where she's been a main character and it hasn't been touched on, the weight thing. Um, But most of the time, I mean, this is very recent, until now if you're um, big on TV or film, you would never be the attractive one, never. That would be a given that you're the – the one who cries on someone's shoulder saying, I wish I was, could lose weight and I wish people like, I wish boys liked me or, you know, looking back at the movies in the 90s, they were a big one. Like that movie Now and Then, do you remember that movie Now and Then uh. where there was four young girls and then they were played by four really famous older actresses like Demi Moore and Tom Hanks' yeah. wife, Rita Wilson. Anyway, there was a young girl in that, Melanie Griffith, thank you, <laughs> Melanie Griffith. There was the Rita Wilson's character, the young girl, was chubby and she wasn't yeah. chubby at yeah. all. But she was always shown eating Twinkies and having kind of a problem with food. And people don't understand what it's like to watch that as a bigger, an actual bigger person, watching someone who isn't bigger and be told that that that, that person who you'd actually be really happy to look like is not yeah. accepted, has not got an acceptable body. And it's like that old saying that goes, well, fuck, if they're not okay, then what What are they saying about me? You know, that, that way of thinking, I would have that all the time and the amount of dieting and absolute self-destruction that I would go through, put my body and my brain through because, you know, when you're dieting, you're depriving your brain of so many nutrients and good fats and all Mm. that kind of stuff and putting bad drugs into your body. Like in the 90s, I would get injections that I didn't even, couldn't even tell you what they were to help my fat go away, never did. Or I would take speed medication, which was prescribed to me. Yeah. Um, that was huge to take that back in the day. What was that? Yeah, Duramine was a big mm-hmm. one. Not just me, like you have an eating disorder as well and you've never had a weight problem ever, but you use the term fat as a um, derogatory all the time. Oh, God, I feel so fat. Oh, my face, look at my fat head. You know, it's a, it's it's so in us, it's so in, entrenched in us in a society that the word fat is a bad thing that we use it like we used to use the word gay. Mm. And for someone who actually is fat, it's just this constant reminder that you're not accepted, that you're not acceptable when, you know, thin people all around you are saying, oh, God, I feel so fat today. Yeah. Um, that it's it's a sad state of affairs when we're making a thin girl who has no weight problem have an eating disorder because she's so frightened that she's going to end up being fat and unaccepted by society. Mm-hmm. So it comes from both yeah, sides. For sure. Yeah, well, you don't just turn up that way, do you? No. It's embedded into you and you are brought up to be a certain way from, you know, the media or your parents or your Society. friends, their mums and dads do Learning it to their, it their kids. They make them eat certain foods, do all the certain sports. You know, you put your kids in things like dancing or modelling and you have to be skinny mm. for dancing. Like I probably would have been fine to run around and eat and ha- have my body be what it was supposed to be. But 
I always had to be in swimmers or I had to be in a ballet costume or whatever it was. And it was kind of like you. my dad was obsessed with eat healthy foods and he had such a big eating disorder that then that also then comes down on to your kids. So it's such a societal thing. And obviously all the shows we watch, like you said before in the article we were reading, the bigger person is always the one that you want to be your best friend, you know, the chubby one that backs you up. And then the it girl, the main character energy is always the beautiful skinny one. And it's wild because like you could sit here and beat yourself up and, you know, you say that I say things like, oh, I've got a fat head or I've got this and that. And yes, I do do that. But in no way would I ever have chosen to think that that was something that should be the right thing for me to say or think of it in a way that should be a bad Mm -hmm. thing because there is actually nothing wrong with being a certain weight. We were talking about how weight, we were never brought up to be told that sometimes people are bigger based off genetics or a hormonal condition or you just are that way and that is so fine. I think the more we start to educate starting from school that everybody's body is so different Mm. and don't compare yourself to people you see on television, which is generally Hollywood, which is so cooked because they'll tell us people like, Jessica Simpson, when she Mm. went through that stage where she gained weight and you look at that picture, her body is so normal. a child. She's just not. She had a normal. No, before having a child. No, she just went through a stage where she just gained. Who knows why? Maybe she had bloody PCOS. Maybe that was always her normal body, but she was starving herself for years that she wouldn't even know what her normal body is. it looked like she had been in that day as Daisy Duke and she'd starved herself to get that be in that role. That's what I was was thinking too. Which wasn't fat at all. I was thinking you should be thinking of when Jessica Simpson was so skinny and that these boots are made for walking. That's when she had an eating disorder. But when she was at that beautiful, healthy weight, everybody was like, she's a train wreck. What she's a she's a yeah. mess. Yeah. It's like I'm pretty sure she probably was a little bit of a mess when she was starving herself to be J- Daisy Duke. Yeah. Like you cannot she, be happy to lose that she much weight. Have felt very good, that's for sure. Another really good one to follow about weight gain and health issues, and just going from a little girl watching her. She was teeny tiny. She was a little girl, and then she had you know teenager whatever. I think she had an eating disorder, like most people do in the industry. Selena Gomez, and now she's at this healthy weight, and she's round faced mm-hmm. like me. So it doesn't matter if I am super tiny. I'll always mm-hmm. have a round face, but you gain weight and lose weight from yeah. your face for me. For me, and. Selena Gomez has had all these health issues and people were so mean when they saw her from going from stick thin to, I think it was 2015, she was in a bikini and she had, what, not a six pack anymore and people were like, no wonder Justin Bieber doesn't want to be with you. Look how fat you've gotten. And it's all for men. And you it goes to show though all these fucking men that these girls love and look up to like the Justin Biebers and the Harry Styles and they are always stick thin mm-hmm. women. None of them are with women that are even a little bit no. bigger. We, and we remember we spoke about this during the Kim Kardashian conversation with um, Davidson, Pete Davidson. Pete. Was like, he's not with the yeah. funny fat chick. Like he's a comedian. He's but with he's with hot, hot thin women, hot girls, and who are thin. But um, if they gained weight, would not allow themselves to do that. But in certain areas, they will actually put the weight on, like uh, prosthetically, put in bums. Um, another one, another funny one from the nineties, um, going into the noughties and today was Nicole Richie. She got uber skinny and has yeah. stayed uber skinny. She, I don't know if that's her natural body or not. That's not for us to discuss. But people used to call her fat. Yeah, that was in the era, era when I was in high school, year 8, 9, 10, 11, was like you to be anorexic was so mm, hot. Mm. Like I was so skinny and I wanted to look exactly mm. like mm. Nicole Richie. Like I wanted to be exactly like her because she was shorter like me, a little bit more weight. And I was just like, that's and so hot. She, and she was on every, every magazine. Every front cover. So you wanted to be like that. See, it's not – the media has so much to Because they for. changed the goalposts all the time. As soon as she got skinny, because yeah. like, they were like, oh, when she did the show with Paris um, and she would – obviously had a really normal body. She wasn't fat. She wasn't thin. She was just really normal, beautiful young woman. And she was a young and girl. She <laughs> was um, 
She went Wild. extremely skinny from probably the media saying she was fat and then she got so skinny that then they plastered that. That was the Portia de Rossi time as well. They would have Portia de Rossi, yeah. N- Nicole Ritchie and Callista Flockhart. They would be on the front covers of all of our magazines, um, skeletal. Because of their eating mm. disorder. Well, I don't know, but Portia has spoken publicly. She's written a book and I read that book about her eating disorder, just how um, gripping it was on her. Like she, you know, the things that she did to, to maintain that skinny, skeletal look. Um, and they'd slam her, slam the three of them for being so, so thin. And yet that was what they told them they had to be and to, for us to love them. So, you know, they – and then they just ch- – they keep changing the goalposts, the media. And us as society, mm. we have to not have the goalposts. There's no goalposts. We have to just take the goalposts away. It is not a sport the way you look. It is not a competition. No. It is not something and, – and it's so steeped in bullshit nutribolics – as Dr. Joshua Wallach calls it, nutribullocks, that we say, oh, it's all about health. We just want these people to be healthy. Like, bullshit, fuck off. Some of the healthiest people today um, could be someone like Lizzo, um, these people who have normal bodies for them, they could be the healthiest person that you know. It does, it, And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have a lot to do with what you're eating. It's, it's all about genetics dna i mean and they they are just proving that more and more and more and the fact that we still are not listening to scientists and we're still looking at old neutral bollocks 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 bullshit that is just not founded on anything but bias and science that especially for women because have you noticed it's not men tom hanks has put on a fat suit for elvis Emma Thompson's mm. put on a fat suit for Mrs. Trunchbull in Matilda. Where's the articles about him? That's so true. Because men are men allowed, are allowed to, to, be. to do it. Look, yeah. think about how many big, bald, average-looking men there are on yeah. television, and we do not ever say, "How did he get that exactly. job?" Exactly. Ever. And how unhealthy just like, oh. is he? My God, he's going to have a heart attack. I'm saying nah. this out of my, you know, health for health reasons. It's like, fuck off. He's going to die. Mm. Like every other man, thin or fat, is going to die later in life. It's it's women who are yep. just constantly – and don't even get me started on women of colour. Like they cop it more than anyone. Raven Simone, um, do you remember her from the 90s? She had her own show, That's So Raven. That's So Raven. She was from the Cosby show in the mm. 80s. She was this tiny little black kid who – I don't know many kids who aren't tiny – when they're five, four, and she then grew yeah. into a teenager who grew um, really big breasts and that made her yeah. look a lot bigger than she was. And that has happened to Christina Ritchie. That also happened to the girl from Modern Family. Um, that happens to women oh, yeah. that the we know. They're not, they're not overweight at all. They have big breasts and the clothes that they are then have to wear to fit those breasts – then have to, you know, make they make them look completely different. Yeah, and also people, when you're going through your hormones too, like give yeah. us a goddamn break. And I feel like when you and I know we all do it because it's in better than us and we're not we're not picking on you by any means because I'm guilty of it. So we're not sitting here throwing, you know, those in glass houses should throw stones or whatever it is. But if you have a daughter or a little sister and you're much older, whatever you've got or a son, whatever, just be really careful about that societal thing that we've been taught to be like, oh, you shouldn't eat that or you shouldn't look. Look the way you want. The more we start doing our own thing and letting our bodies express themselves the way we want them to do, not the way society wants them to do, we will all be so much happier. So pull yourself up when you look at someone on TV and you go, oh, God, she's gained weight, hasn't she? Or she's not that pretty. Yeah, she's beautiful. She just doesn't look like the Barbie dolls that you were brought up and embedded to believe. That's what beauty is because beauty is so much more than that. All right. Well, on that note, that was our little deep dive for our Thursday's episode. We do like to spice things up a little bit and it's just something that's always obviously laid well, it's not even late dormant. It's in front of our faces all the time. So we hope you enjoyed that chat. Always feel free to reach out to us. Where your mates, where your sisters, where your friends. Chat about all the things. Yes. 
And if this episode has raised any issues for you, support is available at the Butterfly Foundation, which you can visit at butterfly.org.au or you can call the National Helpline on 1-800-334-673. And on that note... Have the day that you Have deserve. Thank you for listening you to deserve. us yet again. We love you. Love yourselves. We love you and love we love yourselves. your body and we love all the fat about you. Love, love yourselves. yourselves. Love yourself. I covered, I covered both. You could do whatever you, you like. You can go and love yourself. Whatever you like. <laughs> whatever you like. <laughs> you could do whatever you like.